Most mortgage lenders charge a fee, sometimes up to a point and a half for pulling cash out of your home's equity. Those points are on your whole loan balance, not just the cash you get. For example, if your loan amount is $400,000, that's a $6,000 fee. For a limited time, Owning will waive this fee so qualified borrowers can get a cash out refi with absolutely no closing costs of any kind. Besides the usual no title, escrow, appraisal, etc., no fees for a cash out on a 30-year fixed mortgage. So if you're in process somewhere and paying fees, call 8332-OWNING or go to owning.com, where our rate and APR for a no cash out fee 30-year fixed mortgage is 2 and 3 quarters percent. But hurry, the mortgage industry won't like this, so who knows when this special goes away? Call 8332-OWNING or go to owning.com. NMLS 2611, licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act. Subject to credit approval. Call 833-303-2160 for terms and conditions. Equal housing lender. I'm Doc Rivers, and I'm proud to present a new podcast documentary series called It Was Said Sports, where I guide you through six of the most impactful and timeless speeches in sports history. Listen and follow It Was Said Sports, a documentary podcast presentation of Shining City Audio, a C-13 Originals, and John Meacham Studio. Available now on Odyssey and wherever you listen to your podcasts. It's that time, San Diego. Oh, what time is it? Time to kick it! Time for Gwen and Chris to help you close out your day. I guess I've been working so hard, I forgot what it's like to be hard at work. Time for you to forget about who stole your lunch at work. This is it! This is it! Right here, right now! Time for you to lock in on sports. Featuring Tony Gwen Jr. As, as our previous caller, we mentioned he was flummoxed. 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 Yes. And Chris Ello. Kind of feel like Clay Matthews, uh, that train has sailed, or that ship is. <laughs> The train, the train has, has left sailed. the station, and the, the, ship, and the ship is running. Down, and the ship is running down the track. The, yeah, the something train like did that. not sink. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Thank you, guys. Quinn and Chris are on the air on 97.3 The Fan. Hey, uh, kicking off hour number two. You wonder sometimes, like, what am I doing over here oh, when I'm not paying time. attention and I, the music's playing? I do all the time. And I do know you what really? you're doing. I know what you're doing. What was I doing? I, I can see it in your face. You were panicked that your headphones are spaghetti. My spaghetti. <laughs> I can see it every time. My headphones get spaghetti every time we go to a commercial break. I take it's my, insane. I take my earpiece pods, um, headphone pods out of my ear. And then uh, we're gonna walk around or uh, do some uh, checking on the internet for some uh, some information or something to talk about. And then when I pick them back up, as Scraby says, they get scrambled into spaghetti, and it takes me like half the inner inner uh, interview uh, interlude music there to uh, to get them uh, unscrambled. No, that's right, Scraby. That's exactly I, well, it. Well, I can see it in your face every time. I'm panicking. It's, I can't. Here. I can't get these done. Uh, the music is still playing, and I can't get my headphones done. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what's what's weird about the intro music is that uh, I used to have that uh, piece of music by Eric Johnson. It's in there still. Still in there. Cliffs of Dover. Yeah, it's still in there. Yeah, we don't hear it very often anymore. But uh, way back when, I used to. It used to be kind of the staple of my show at the top of every hour. And it was like a 90-second music bed, and I was told, yeah, go ahead, let that play. Really? Yeah. We used to play it for over a minute sometimes before oh I would even gosh, come back. I can't even imagine. Now it's totally a different story. It's like as soon as the music starts, start talking. So it's interesting how things it's really is. develop over the years. Uh, Padres and Dodgers, game one of a, uh, a crucial – look, we're going to hear this word crucial – for the next three weeks, right? Every single game is going to be crucial, uh, starting tonight with Joe Musgrove, Julio Urias pitching for the Dodgers. Dodger lineup is out. Uh, Mookie Betts will be in there in right field. Uh, Chris Taylor's the center fielder tonight. Gavin Lux will be in left field. Evidently, Cody Bellinger not able to play tonight. Doesn't break my heart. Uh, man, this Dodger team is loaded, though. My good, look at this infield. Max Muncie, Trey Turner, Corey Seager, Justin Turner. 
How many teams can put that infield out there? And they bat two, three, four, five in the order. I mean, that's annoying. just that's so good. It's annoying. So good, and uh, Padres have to find a way. Padre lineup is not out. As soon as we get it, we'll pass it along to you. Uh, we need some phone callers. We need some players. Yes. Who wants to play some trivia? Who wants a chance to qualify to go to Las Vegas? My goodness, you don't even have to be a great trivia expert. Oftentimes, I will be the one that misses the questions and Chris versus the fans, and if that happens... You can cash in and qualify for a chance today to win a two-night hotel stay at Westgate, a private VIP pod at the Westgate Superbook, and $250 in food and beverage credit. It's all the Westgate Las Vegas Legendary Vegas Fund. Now, the only way you can qualify is to call in. Yeah. And the uh, number is 833-288-0973. Very rare do we get to this point in Chris versus the fans and have more than one phone line open. This is true. But that is the case right now. So if you are like, hey, I, I've never played Chris versus the fan before. Chris versus the fans. I, I, I don't know the name of my own segment. <laughs> it's all right. It's Chris all right. versus the fans. But I've never played before because I don't think I'd be very good at trivia. Hey, give it a shot. You usually, don't even have to yeah. get the answers correct because a lot of times I'll miss them. Usually that means you'll win. Yeah. Anyway, so we're looking for some contestants to play Chris versus the fans. In the meantime, Scraby, give us uh, the intro and we'll get going. All right. If you had one shot, one opportunity to take down the human almanac himself. Howdy do. Now is your time. Listen to me, this guy is dangerous. Now is your opportunity to win a prize. Well, I hope you know what you're in for. Chris versus the fans starts now on 97.3 The Fan. All right, Scraby, I like my chances to uh, win today <laughs> really... because I don't believe anybody's going to play. <laughs> I don't know what's going on today. This Maybe is really we weird. Late callers, but yeah, usually we are ready to go by now. So 833 288 You have to make it through three questions. Each question is going to get more difficult. If you get the question right, you move on. If you get it wrong and Chris gets it right, you're eliminated. But if Chris gets it wrong, then you move on to a next qu- the next question or you win. And another selling point for this game, we have had a, a couple short shows this week. We also had a holiday this week so the qualification for this prize is it's much better in your favor than it usually is right we don't have as many qualifiers this week there's less qualifiers so yeah uh we will be only giving away two qualifiers this you know what i have a good idea let's not even play chris versus the fans let's just give caesar the prize (laughs) really no he's got to play he's got to play come on he's on the phone and he's like what i just won you might win anyway all right cesar Cesar, what's up, buddy? How do you do? How do you do? I want to play. Oh, he wants to play. He wants to play. That's, he's like, that's uh, the spirit. He's like, uh, who said that? Give me the ball and we're going to score. Oh, Matt Hasselbeck. He's that guy. Oh, yeah. I remember he's that. that guy. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, here we go, Cesar. Question number one. I know you are a veteran player, so here we go. Tom, Bla- <laughs> Tom Brady played quarterback for what college? Uh, Michigan. Michigan is correct. It's kind of weird because it was so long ago. Not a lot of people remember that anymore. He literally legitimately played quarterback in the 90s. And he was not a full-time quarterback. (laughs) He wasn't. He was a backup. Backup. Yeah, well, he started the uh, Orange Bowl that year against okay. Alabama. So yeah, I, I was I was so he young. wasn't totally a backup. And this isn't a joke. I was so young. I don't have any recollection of Tom Brady playing college football. Yeah, I very have very little recollection of it to be honest with you. But Cesar got it right. He went to Michigan, and now we go to question number two. What, you don't like the question? Your, um, it's your own question. No, I'm choosing which one I want because I just put some new ones in there. All right, this one seems what it would be somewhat easy for question number two. What was that sound? I think uh, Cesar was getting ice or something. I don't know, maybe. Madden 22 features which two NFL players on the cover? Oh, jeez. Uh, is it Mahomes and Brady? Mahomes... And Brady is correct. Nicely done. Is that one of the first times that they've ever had two people on the cover? I, I can't remember two people ever yeah. before. But, yeah, definitely. I think it is. It's the MVP edition, which is kind of funny because who won the MVP in the NFL last year? Uh, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. He's not on the cover. <laughs> He's not on the cover. <laughs> of the MVP edition. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well, they weren't sure if he was going to be at the back. Uh, this is true. This is true. He, we weren't when sure he if he was going to sure play. Gonna play. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
All right, Cesar, you are on to question number three. This one, I, I have no idea if Chris is going to know this or not, but he's pretty good with his history. But Cesar, you could win it all by answering it correctly. What city was the first to host a World Series game at night? I want to go with Pittsburgh. That's a good guess, I think. You want to go with Pittsburgh, and you're going to want to go with it, because that is correct. That is a great guess. Wow. Right. 1971 Dang. World Series, Pittsburgh Pirates, Baltimore Orioles. Okay, I didn't know you knew that much about it. I thought Damn. you didn't know the city, but geez. Caesar was all over it. Nice job, Caesar. I'm wow. glad you won, because honestly, nobody wanted to play today anyway. So. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Very oh. strange day on Chris versus the fans, but uh, good day for you, man. You qualify for the Las Vegas trip. Nice job, uh I, I remember that game Thank quite well. Stay was, there. I'm going to get you in the break. Uh, thanks, Cesar. Yeah, stay online there. I remember it quite well because I was uh, just in, in you know school and grade school. At oh, the and time. they were getting to play a game at and night. And they were having a World Series game at night. That is, and so we okay, were all, that's memorable. We were all very excited as kids in the schoolyard. Yeah, that, uh, no, that's Hey, we're going to be able to go home and watch a World Series game because up until that point, of course, Every World Series game was played in the daytime, and I know it's hard to imagine. It right, really is that while everybody was at work, and while all They're kids were in school, <laughs> they were playing the World Series on a Tuesday afternoon at Yankee Stadium. But uh, yeah, 1971, they had the first night game. You know, it's another interesting question now would be to ask: When was the last time a World Series game was played in the daytime? Because I don't remember it. In the last 30 years. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I can't think of anything. I, I can't either off the top you know, of my head. The, I'm sure we could look it up somewhere. There was, but... a, there was like an NLCS or an ALCS game that was during the Well, a the lot day. of LCS games are because they play two games in the same day. Which is so, so one weird of them will to be me, in, though. So, but you got to play two games now, in I one get, day. I get why. But it's weird to me to play a big game like that in the middle of a day. Yeah, but you have to. You mean you're talking about a weekday? Yeah, yeah. I'm fine with a, I mean, a weekend, but a, according, a to, according to this, I just typed it in. The last daytime World Series game was the fifth game of the 1984 World Series, which was uh, between the Padres and the Detroit Tigers. Wow. Padres so tying in what, right again. That's what it says. Uh, I do remember that game being played in the afternoon, but uh, I think, the, you know, I think 1987, the Cardinals and Twins played a day game in the World Series. Uh, it start, here it is. Game six started at four o'clock Eastern time, so that would kind of that would be one o'clock Pacific. It'd be time. so weird. We're, we'd be doing our show with the. Well, it was a Saturday. Of, no, it was oh, a Saturday. Okay, right. That was a Saturday, but that was Game six of the nineteen eighty seven World Series. But my point is, you got to go back over thirty years for the last time there was any day game in the World Series, and just to think that twenty years before that, all of the World Series games were played in the daytime. That is strange. Now none of them are. So how do you like that? How All do you right. like that? How do you like them apples? Good job by Cesar there. Yeah. That was well done That was well him. done. Well done on him to get that game. Uh, Bruce Keeson pitched that game for the Pittsburgh Pirates. I, I don't know why in the world I remember that. Uh, Padre lineup is now out for tonight's game. Give you a little uh, look-see at it. Uh, Adam Frazier is in the lineup tonight at second base. <laughs> Against a left-handed starter. That has not been the case for Adam Frazier. Well, he's coming off a recently. good game. Yeah, he had two hits in one inning, so he's getting the start tonight. <laughs> uh, Trent Grisham, who has been platooned <gasps> against left-handers, is in the lineup tonight, so he's getting a crack at it. Uh, Tommy Pham, I think Tommy can kind of forget about it. I, I, I don't think that we're going to see a whole lot more of him the rest of this year. He just has not gotten the job done, and if he's not starting against a left-handed pitcher... He's 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 getting ready for free agency. Um, let's see. Uh, also, so he's not in the lineup tonight. Neither is Eric Cosmer. All right, we're gonna do a drum roll. First base is what? What's oh, your drum roll? Okay, first base. Drum Jerks roll and Profar. The, Jerks and Profar. So the Hosmer haters happy today? Yes, the Hosmer haters are celebrating. What about who is playing shortstop tonight? Jay Cronenworth. Oh. Yeah, that's not changing. Oh, okay. Yeah, Fernando's in right field. You mean Twitter does not have any control over where Fernando plays? They think they do. 
They think they do. But they, I know they I'm being a jerk they right now. But. No, you're not being a jerk right now. I read all that same stuff that I you I get read. DMs all the time saying... People are people out of their minds, man, with this whole Fernando's got to go to shortstop thing. Uh, first of all, they're not going to they're not gonna move him to shortstop this season. Uh, I don't. He's not playing there anymore. Uh, they're going to keep him in the outfield. And, you know, this whole notion that he can't get the job done at the plate because he's playing the outfield... It doesn't really hold a lot of water. I mean, it, it's you know, there, he's had some struggles, but he's had a, some big games as well. I, I, I don't buy into it at all, uh, honestly. And with Tommy Pham struggling as badly as he is, um, there's room in the outfield right now for Fernando, the way I look at it. So, anyway, there you go. Uh, Padres, Joe Musgrove against Julio Urias tonight. When we come back... Uh, just absolutely remarkable goings on in the sports world that you're not paying attention to. I'll tell you what I mean when we return. And then at the bottom of the hour, it is the, um, the big five. So stick around for that. Blake Snell scheduled to join us in the five o'clock hour. Gwen and Chris continues after a check of traffic on 97.3 The Fan. Most mortgage lenders charge a fee, sometimes up to a point and a half for pulling cash out of your home's equity. Those points are on your whole loan balance, not just the cash you get. For example, if your loan amount is 400000 that's a $6,000 fee. For a limited time, owning will waive this fee so qualified borrowers can get a cash-out refi with absolutely no closing costs of any kind. Besides the usual no title, escrow, appraisal, etc., no fees for a cash-out on a 30-year fixed mortgage. So if you're in process somewhere and paying fees, call 8332-OWNING or go to owning.com, where our rate and APR for a no-cash-out fee 30-year fixed mortgage is 2 and 3 quarters percent. But hurry, the mortgage industry won't like this, so who knows when this special goes away. Call 8332-OWNING or go to owning.com. NMLS 2611, licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act. Subject to credit approval. Call 833-303-2160 for terms and conditions. Equal housing lender. Innovation. Resilience. Agility. It's how Michigan businesses work together and continue to build the future. Our expertise, talented workforce, and collaborative environment are making a difference now and shaping the future. Join us and make your mark where it matters. Visit michiganbusiness.org slash radio to put your plans in motion. That's michiganbusiness.org slash radio. Odyssey's going back to school, and we've got all the supplies you need, like A-plus exclusive music stations and podcasts to help you or your student excel. Wake up and get the school day started with Acoustic Sunrise, the best mix of acoustic pop. Hit the books with classical Odyssey, passionate classical music to help you focus while you study. Listen to essential school podcasts like Grammar Girl's Quick and Dirty Tips for Better Writing and be inspired with TED Talks Daily. Get back to school with new exclusive stations, plus all your favorite local radio stations and podcasts on Odyssey. You want to know what wagertainment is? It's the picks, the analysis, the information mixed with the laughter and the entertainment. Smart sports betting content. That'll put a smile on your face. The BetQL Network, streaming live each day and helping you bet smarter. If you're a sports fan, you know why you should listen? It's sports betting content without the BS. No hot takes, no nonsense. The BetQL Network, streaming live right now on Odyssey. Sports, bets, and entertainment. Dumbest thing on NFL oh, Network right here. now. Dumbest thing. Don't go here. Chris says this every time. I say it every time because they do it every week and waste our time with it. <laughs> You're not even watching it. I was just watching it. I'm looking up on the TV, NFL Total Act- Access. Some gal is on there. She's not on her pick- show. Not, I I don't mind. I'm just, it's not her fault. They're the ones that have her doing it. <laughs> But she's not just picking who's going to win these games or who's going to beat the point spread. She's actually picking the score of the game. We've already discussed with Scraby how dumb that is because Scraby's been trying to pick the score of a Padre game all year long, and we're now at September 10th, and he still hasn't done it. <laughs> so for this, I, I, I would be shocked if this lady has picked the correct score of one game 
in the last five seasons. I think it's easier to predict football scores than it would be. Really? I'm not going to go down the road, and I'm not no, going to do that. I'm not going to ask you to do it. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to ask you to do it. Because I don't want to pick scores No, because I already know you life. can't do it. I know <laughs> you can't do it. I would feel like a football score would be easier to predict than a baseball no score. No chance. It's just like the Super Bowl every year. Everybody comes out. Not only do they predict who's going to win, but they all got to give you their score. Here's the score from... I don't know. Uh, you name the rap star, and he's got a score for the Super Bowl. You name the reality TV star. Kim Kardashian's going to give me the score of the Super Bowl. The situation give from me Jersey a break. Shore. Give me a break. Nobody can predict the score of these What if games. Kim Kardashian got it right? It would be total luck. There would be no skill involved in that. Come on. Everybody picks the score of the Super Bowl. This gal's picking the score of regular season games. All right. Well, I guess I don't need to watch Panthers Jets now because <laughs> the final score is, according to her, is going to be twenty-seven twenty. Who's winning? Uh, Panthers, according okay. to uh, the gal on NFL. I'm Network. surprised that that Cynthia Freeland is going to say twenty points for the Jets. That's a lot of points for the Jets. That is a lot but, of points. Uh, they don't anyway. even have their one receiver because he's got COVID. And Crowder's they gotta, out. They got a first. They got their first round draft pick, Zach Wilson, trying to become a quarterback in New York, and that doesn't work. Well, he's going to be quarterbacking in Carolina first, in Charlotte, for his first game. All right, let me get this. Uh, this is very important to us here on the show. We are big mental health supporters on Gwyn and Chris and 97.3 The Fan, and talk has the power to save lives. Join 97.3 The Fan on Thursday, September 23rd at 10 p.m. for I'm Listening, a live two-hour show featuring some of the biggest names in music and sports and insight from some of the most respected mental health professionals as we strive to destigmatize talking about mental health. I'm Listening will be hosted by Carson Daly and Dr. Alfie. Guests include Kevin Love, Billie Eilish, Shakira, Justin Bieber, Tom Morello, and many more. You are not alone. Join us Thursday, September 23rd from 10 p.m. to midnight for I'm Listening. Listen right here on 97.3 The Fan and on the Odyssey app. For more information, visit imlistening.org. All right, when is that again? Please tell me September the date. 23rd, Thursday, September, September 23rd. 23rd. So that's so coming up. from yesterday. Almost a couple of weeks. Uh, certainly very important. Uh, uh, tune in and uh, and grab uh, whatever uh, you can from that show. Uh, we should also mention to Scraby that in our country tomorrow is quite the anniversary uh, yeah. day, a nine eleven, the twentieth anniversary of one of the scariest days any of us have ever gone through. And uh, so there's a lot of there's been a lot of specials. I know that Netflix has one, HBO has one, some of the networks are doing specials on the whole nine eleven thing. I, you know. And it, it can never be scary enough to see that footage again because it just takes you back to be in there. Uh, when we were with the women's basketball team, this was strange to me, Scraby. When I was with the women's basketball team, the Aztecs, uh, two years ago maybe, we played a tournament in uh, New Jersey, mm -hmm. Seton Hall, uh, but had a day off. And so they took the team over to the World Trade Center museum which mm -hmm. is now there yeah. and i walked through there with these young ladies none of whom had been born when 9 11 happened wow. or if they had been born they were no more were than a little. year or two yeah. old and the look of horror on their faces i mean not that they hadn't heard of it but you know to experience it at the museum and to and be see there all and of see it, it and actually be right where it all took place uh yeah, it was it was sobering to say the least uh, to be a uh, part of that uh, tour with those kids, and uh, so anyway, um, there's a, tomorrow there's... make sure we all take a moment to uh, thank those that uh, you know gave their lives and uh, you know gave everything they could to help protect our country uh, in the wake of that disaster. There's actually a documentary that they put out on Netflix recently, and it's about it's about. 9 11 and that's what everything. i just said netflix had a really good one. Oh, you did say that did. specific one okay, i did good. Yeah, yeah netflix has a really good one if you should have interested. been listening you're not <laughs> um what you should be watching is this u.s open tennis i mentioned it the other day and it's gotten even more exciting uh the two teenage uh young ladies 119 and 118 years of age have both moved into the finals uh incredible performances uh one is uh, Layla fernandez uh, Canadian, 19 years old, 
uh, upset the number two ranked player in the world last night to get to the finals. Imagine being 19 and being the older of the two finalists, but uh, she will be the older because 18-year-old Emma Raducanu of uh, Great Britain also won her semifinal match. This is turning tennis on its ear. I mean, uh, imagine having two unseated teenage players, one of whom wasn't even in the main draw of the tournament. She had to qualify just to get into the tournament, and she became uh, Radicano. I'm talking about, became the first ever qualifier in the history of tennis, men's or women's, to reach the finals of a major tournament from the qualifying rounds. Uh, so anyway, I'm kind of looking forward to that. I'm a tennis fan. Uh, talked about this the other day. Uh, tomorrow's going to be the final between these two young ladies. They're really fun to watch, and uh, both... It's going to be interesting to see two two young players. Neither of them really have much to lose because neither of them were supposed to be here, and they both made it. So uh, that's going to be fun. Uh, tonight, Novak Djokovic is uh, playing Alexander Zverev of, uh, uh, where is he, Ukraine, or is it uh, Russia? I think, I, I'm not sure. But anyway. I could uh, say something very politically incorrect, but I'm not going to. Don't. Uh, he's the number four seed. Uh, Djokovic uh, going for the Grand Slam, which has not happened in uh, tennis since See, 1968. That's worth, a watch. that's worth a watch right there. If he's if he's coming down at the end and it's looking like he's going to do it, I'll, I'll, I will throw it on for sure. You won't watch the uh, two teenagers play tomorrow. I might. I might throw it on if, I, if I'm around because I got stuff going on tomorrow, but I, I may watch that. I, I think it's pretty cool to see. Uh, two young players doing things at the highest it's been level fun. of their sport. It's been fun watching them beat all of these high-ranked players and established players. Now it's going to be interesting to see them play each other, but both of them have been moving through the draw, beating all of these top ten players and more established people. And You know, you keep expecting these kids to crack under the pressure, and uh, neither of them knows anything about it, and uh, they keep moving on. So... Uh, we will, uh, or I'll keep an eye on do the you, tennis. Do you think that it's going to be, because like in golf, when this happens, when you get two really young players and they're, they're fighting for a major, sometimes the nerves show up and it's not good golf. Do you think that there will be good tennis being played? I think it will. Uh, I, I, I know what you're saying and it makes sense what you're saying, but these kids make no sense. I mean, they just both have been incredible. Uh, they've played uh, superior tennis throughout and like I said, now at this point they're playing each other. They've got nothing to lose but to just go out and let it, you know, let it fly. And I think that they will. And uh, they they both have so much spirit. The interesting thing is, is the New York crowds have been rooting for these two kids in every one of their matches, mm-hmm. to the point last night where uh, the Sabalenka, the number two player uh, in one of the matches, was almost getting upset <laughs> because she was hitting good shots and they weren't really cheering for her. I would her. be upset too. Yeah, she was like, come on, what about me? I'm hitting some good shots here. But they were so squarely behind the 19-year-old player. Uh, so I don't know who they're going to root for is my point. It's uh, I think you're, they'll just root for a good tennis match. I think it will be. I think they – it's not the Super Bowl. But I mean, it's the final of a major, and uh, you know, I mean, two uh, two teenagers to get there. I don't think it's happened uh, in since 1999 was the last time, and those two players were Serena and Martina Hingis were teenagers who played in the U.S. Open I mean, final. You can't. They get were top notch players, though. Yeah, These you can't get are, on any bigger of a stage than the U.S. Open for an American. No, it's pretty big, and uh, of course, neither of them are Americans, but. Uh, because I think the biggest stage is probably still center court at Wimbledon. But this is pretty big, and uh, they both made it. So I thought that was pretty impressive. Some fun sports stuff that you may not be paying attention to. All right, when we come back, Tony rejoins us for the Big Five on Gwen and Chris. Hey, you can vote safe, California. Keep that in mind. Californians can return their recall ballots through September the 14th. Just put your completed ballot in the postage paid envelope. Sign the back, return by mail at a drop box or in person to learn more at vote.ca.gov. That's a vote.ca.gov. Chris Ello, Matt Scraby together in our Odyssey Palace studios in San Diego. Tony Gwynn Jr., he is in Los Angeles, rejoins us now for our Big Five, which uh, takes place right after we check on traffic. 
Most mortgage lenders charge a fee, sometimes up to a point and a half for pulling cash out of your home's equity. Those points are on your whole loan balance, not just the cash you get. For example, if your loan amount is $400,000, that's a $6,000 fee. For a limited time, Owning will waive this fee so qualified borrowers can get a cash out refi with absolutely no closing costs of any kind. Besides the usual no title, escrow, appraisal, etc., no fees for a cash out on a 30-year fixed mortgage. So if you're in process somewhere and paying fees, call 8332-OWNING or go to owning.com, where our rate and APR for a no-cash-out fee 30-year fixed mortgage is 2 and 3 quarters percent. But hurry, the mortgage industry won't like this, so who knows when this special goes away? Call 8332-OWNING or go to owning.com. NMLS 2611, licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act. Subject to credit approval. Call 833-303-2160 for terms and conditions. Equal housing lender. Innovation. Resilience. Agility. It's how Michigan businesses work together and continue to build the future. Our expertise, talented workforce, and collaborative environment are making a difference now and shaping the future. Join us and make your mark where it matters. Visit michiganbusiness.org slash radio to put your plans in motion. That's michiganbusiness.org slash radio. Hey, I'm Peter Bukowski, host of the Locked On Today podcast. Trying to stay on top of every big story in sports is a full-time job. I know because it is my full-time job, but it's not yours. That's why we have a network of local experts ready to give you the inside scoop on everything you truly need to know in the sports world. And we do it every day to make sure you're always caught up on the latest and greatest in sports. Listen to the Locked On Today podcast every day on the Odyssey app or wherever you get podcasts. I'm Doc Rivers, and I'm proud to present a new podcast documentary series called It Was Said Sports, where I guide you through six of the most impactful and timeless speeches in sports history. Listen and follow It Was Said Sports, a documentary podcast presentation of Shining City Audio, a C-13 Originals, and John Meacham Studio. Available now on Odyssey and wherever you listen to your podcasts. It's time to embark on a twisting and turning journey through sports. A strange journey. What? What can I do? How how can I reverse this? Sit back, relax, and ignore that last part if you're driving. Always have your hands at 10 and 2 with 97.3 on your radio. Gwen and Chris go through the best of the rest of the day. The Big Five starts now on 97.3 The Fan. And the Big Five is brought to you by Penske Lincoln in La Mesa. Good looks, elegance, sophistication. That's what it's like to drive a Lincoln. And Penske Lincoln in La Mesa makes it uncomplicated and easy. Penske Lincoln, 8850 Grossmont Boulevard. Well, we saw the beginning to the NFL season last night. Number five. And one guy who's still looking for a job, probably very surprised that he is uh, no longer employed by his former team, Cam Newton, who was released by the Patriots uh, earlier last week. He spoke out about his release in a video that he put out, and it's he and his father chatting about the release, and he said some pretty interesting things, so let's get right to the video. This is Cam Newton. I'm just going to play a little bit of it, and you guys can get a feel for what he's saying in this, but this is him talking about his release from the Patriots. The reason why they released me is because indirectly, I was going to be a distraction. Without if, being a starter. Without being a starter. Yeah. And this was but not how? Gonna come. Verbally or in the locker room? Just my aura. Okay. Just my aura. And and that's just, and I told you this off camera. That's my gift and my curse. Yeah. When you bring a Cam Newton to your facility, when you bring a Cam Newton to your franchise, people are interested by mere fact they of are intrigued. who is he? Yeah. Why does he wear yeah. his hair? Yeah. Why does he talk? Why does he act? Why does he perform? Why yeah. does all these yeah. questions. Yeah. So let's just be, let me be honest with you. Come to me. Saying this. Yeah. <laughs> if they would have asked me, would I play behind? They said, Cam, we're going to give the team to Matt. Okay. You're going to be the second stream. We okay. expect you to be everything and some yeah. to guide yeah. him yeah. throughout yeah. this tenure. Okay. I would say absolutely. Yeah. So that is uh, some of the video. You can find the rest of the video online, but uh, he, he had some really 
pretty interesting things to say. He basically said that Mac Jones wouldn't be able to hold be be the back or he wouldn't be able to have Cam be the backup, and then kind of heard his reasoning around that. But uh, we're gonna start with you, Chris. Do you think Cam is right or wrong in his assessment? I think Cam's full of himself. Uh, I don't think there's any question about that. He's not lacking for confidence uh, in his greatness and his aura and uh, what he means to the world. Um, I don't think he's lacking on any of those uh, on those fronts. But, you know, I really don't know 100 percent. I, I, I still think it has something to do with his uh, refusal to, you know, get with the program in the COVID situation. If he it, That could be the distraction that he's referring to, although he didn't refer to that. He, uh, he thinks it'd be a different thing. I, I, I think Bill Belichick's about having the best possible team and putting his team in the best position to win. And I, I, I don't think Bill Belichick gets into personal stuff too much. So I think it's okay. Cam Newton wants to think all that stuff. But I, I, I think kind of what Tony's been saying, and I don't know what he feels about this, but I think that COVID would have been the distraction that might have caused Bill Belichick to make the move he did. What do you think, Tony? Do you think Cam is right or wrong in his his assessment of himself? Um, I, I I think he's partially right. I think uh, along with him not having a um, – not being vaccinated, I think – he would have been a distraction whether he had that or not, just him being a backup, right? I mean, you've heard other pundits talk about there's no way Cam can be a backup. Well, I think he's doing two things here. I think he is letting the other teams out there know that he's willing to be a backup. Uh, but in terms of whether he's right, I think it's a, could, I think it could have been a piece of the reason. I think, uh, I think the fact that Mac Jones is, is young, talented was a piece of it i think the fact that uh he wasn't vaccinated and that could it it, it could end up costing the patriots game was a piece and i think that he's right it would have been a topic if you removed all those other two things it still would have been a topic of discussion with cam newton in that locker room um without you know getting any further into the details i think that would have been a piece of it yeah and uh, you can go find the rest of that video on Twitter from Cam Newton. Number four. Now we're going to have another piece of audio here, a double audio day on the Big Five. Which well, you called the last happen. piece video, by yeah, the way. Well, it, it is video. Okay. Nobody cares that it's video. It's yeah, audio. we're on the radio, Scraby. Last well, I, I checked. Okay. Well, I, I did want to see. I want everyone to see that video because it's it's good. It's a good watch. I watched a lot of it. I watched more than that two minute clip. Good for you. I watched a lot, but. Current Red Sox outfielder Hunter Renfro is making some waves around baseball after he made an appearance on sister station WEEI in Boston, and he said this to Marloni and Fourier about the recent struggles with the White, or the White Sox, the Red Sox, and their COVID outbreak. It's a tough time for us right now. You know, we're going through a lot of stuff with COVID, and, and I think the, one of the things, like, MLB's basically told us stop to stop testing and just treat the symptoms. But we're like, no, we're going we're gonna to figure out what's going on and keep, you know, then try to keep this thing under control. But um, other than that, I think that, you know, our staff, like I said, are doing an incredible job keeping guys on the field. And, and But the COVID stuff, you know, they got, you know, a lot of our really good players that we could use right now, obviously, uh, you know, Nick and, and Bogey and Christian and, and uh, guys like that, and that that we could really use. And thank God we got, you know, we got KK back the other day, and he's obviously stepped in huge and, and already contributed to the team coming back. So MLB asked you to stop testing? Yes. So there's uh, also more out about that if you want to see the full interview. But that was the clip that was making the rounds from sister station WEEI. And, Tony, you're up first on this one. Major League Baseball, by the way, has strongly denied this. They have said this is not true. We did not tell them to stop testing. But Hunter Renfro seems like he understood the question and he answered it with understanding that question. So, Tony, do you think there is truth to what Hunter Renfro is saying here? Uh, I don't know. Uh I could see a scenario in which somebody who works for Major League Baseball makes a statement like that, but it's not an official statement from Major League Baseball. It just, it, 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 I mean, could it be true? Of course it could be. I mean, I don't know. This one's, uh, I, I've been going back and forth on this one all day long. Um I don't like that that Hunter says he, they basically told us to. Yeah. Like, basically, it like, was a lot. Did, did, to did they tell desire. you or did they not tell you to not test? 
But then they followed up on it and asked him, and he said yes, straight up. So I don't know. Either way, it's a terrible idea for Major League Baseball or someone in Major League Baseball's office to tell anybody that. And then it get out. Because you see, they immediately knew the ramifications if that turned out to be true, right? Because they were so quick to get out there in front of that to say, that is not true. We did not say that. So I don't know. If it, if somebody if if it is true, that's a stupid decision by Major League Baseball. That's <laughs> the only thing I can think of. Chris, what do you think? I think it's true. I, I think somebody said it maybe in jest. I think somebody said it maybe in a hopeful way, like, God, I wish we didn't have to test you guys anymore so yeah, that we didn't have I any more positives. That. I could honestly see that being said by somebody out of frustration. Yeah. Uh, Hunter Renfro is twisting it just a little bit. Maybe we're not getting the total proper context of how it was said. Yeah. But as Tony said, uh, this is something baseball has to quickly deny and quickly get back to making sure that we know that they know that they need to test players. So, Well, they've lost Chris Sale for the weekend, and they yeah. are dealing with an outbreak. So yes, that is are. the news out of Boston, and we'll keep an eye on that. Number three. The Ryder Cup, one of my favorite sporting events ever, is set to take place two weekends from now, but there is a little bit of a controversy with the American team. Patrick Reed was left off the team. He was not picked by Captain Steve Stricker. And the fiery and controversial Patrick Reed, who has not tweeted personally about the decision, he has been on Ryder Cup teams going back for a couple or the last three appearances. He's 7-3-2 and two in his record. He's a really great Ryder Cup player, and he's 31 years old, but he is recovering from double pneumonia that left him hospitalized and fearing for his life. Steve Stricker says that was the reason he did not make the team. Well, Patrick Reed did not like that reasoning, and he went on Twitter and started liking a bunch of tweets that were trashing Steve Stricker. <laughs> did he his- like a bunch of tweets, or did he like a tweet? No, I, I saw, unless, I, I follow a golf blog, and they had a video going through all of his likes about Steve Stricker, but he definitely, I'm going to look at this while we're answering, but I'm pretty sure he liked more than one tweet <laughs> about okay. Steve Stricker, but it was, uh, you know, Patrick Reed's a fiery guy. So, Chris, do you have any problem with him liking tweets trashing Steve Stricker? Uh, first question, what uh, sport is the Ryder Cup? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> And why are we talking about it on this show? What, is it is it actually sports? It's golf. Right, Chris. I know. I'm just. It's kidding. golf. It's American versus know, Europeans. I know. Ha- I only know that because I know Patrick Reed is a golfer who looks like you. That's the only <laughs> thing I know. Um, I, I can un- honestly understand why Steve Stricker didn't pick Patrick Reed in the wake of his illness. I mean, it was a pretty scary situation. I mean, double pneumonia and uh, fearing for his life. I'm sure Patrick Reed feels like he's back and ready to play again, but I can understand Steve Stricker thinking maybe he's not going to be in his best form, hasn't been practicing as much, hasn't been hitting as many balls. So I'm not going to criticize Steve Stricker. I can understand Patrick Reed criticizing him because he wants to play. But if you want to play and want to make sure you get to play, make sure you're the captain. If you're not, then you got to settle sometimes for what the captain decides. Or play yourself in. That's well, is there a certain requirement yeah, that gets get, certain guys automatically yeah. qualified? Yeah. See, I didn't yeah. know that. You get a certain amount of points, and you automatically qualify, oh, well, and then you get six That's a very good picks. point, too. That's a very good point. But uh, um, he put himself in a situation to have to be picked, and uh, he wasn't. Yeah, I'm looking through it, and there's just he just he goes through and likes tweets. It's not like he's liking tweets from like big-name people. He's just liking the fans that are saying he deserves to be on the team and stuff like that. Yeah, well, that's understandable. He's, yeah. he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's appreciating the support he's yeah. getting. Uh, Tony, do you have any problem with him liking these tweets? No, I don't. Um, I certainly understand where Stricker's, Stricker's coming from, Steve's coming from, because, uh, I mean, according to Patrick Reed himself, he thought he was going to die. So mm-hmm. it wasn't like this was a mild case by any means of whatever it was. Pneumonia, I think it was, right? Double pneumonia. Uh, dub- double pneumonia. So, yeah, I, I, I don't have a problem with Steve Stricker. Um electing to go a different direction i don't have a problem with patrick reed feeling some type of way about steve stricker wanting to go in a different direction so uh, all is well this is just uh, a lot to do about nothing 
Maybe a doctor out there can tweet us and tell us exactly what double pneumonia is because it sounds very scary to me. Pneumonia is scary enough. I, I don't even know what double pneumonia is. It sounds like double secret probation or something. <laughs> it sounds like but, you get pneumonia once, and then if that's not enough, you get you it again. Get it on top of that, so <laughs> which is amazing. Yeah, and I'm sure somebody will let us know. And all of that. So number two. Chris and I were talking about the NFL Sunday ticket off the air the other day and how it's a little outdated that DirecTV is the only service that can offer it. And Chris was saying, I would buy it if they offered it elsewhere, but I can't because I don't have DirecTV. Well, not everyone can get the ticket, and NFL is paying attention to that. There are some reports out today saying that Amazon Prime may take over the Sunday ticket package after the 2022 season. Tony, would you like to see the NFL Sunday ticket package move? I, I, I think he's a direct. TV guy too. Yeah, I Tony. don't really care what everybody else. <laughs> is doing. Tony's. I right. have, I have it on Direct TV. You do. Yeah. Uh, this is. Um, I mean, this is another. I mean, listen, it's how I felt about uh, MLB the Show when mm. it could only be printed on Sony, but I just had to deal with it. Like, I, I either I was going to buy a PlayStation, or I was going to wait. I waited it out. Now, you know, MLB the Show was passed out to every device now and it's the same thing with the nfl ticket i mean eventually the nfl will sell that rights to somebody or they'll say hey everybody have at it y'all all break bread with us however <laughs> it's gonna be um but you know it's I, I i i don't i don't think it's outdated i just think this is the terms of the deal and the folks who don't have direct tv have to wait until it either change changes mm, chris what do you think well i Again, I, I'm not. It's not. It's not destroying me that I don't have the direct <laughs> right. ticket package because at least I have the red zone, and I really True. do love that. But I, I do think outdated is probably not the right word. But I think it's time for the NFL, you know, to get through this contract and get with it. I mean, we're now in a in an era and a in a time in our lives, sports wise, where everything is available to us whenever, wherever we want, if we're willing to pay for it, especially. And it, it amazes me that, you know, America's game, which football thinks of itself as and is probably correct, is not available to everybody who would like to watch it. So I think the NFL needs to, you know, figure this out and uh, and make it available, and much like you said that they did with MLB The Show, got became available to all game players. It's time for NFL football games to be available to all viewers who want to pay for it. Yeah, that's all. All right. I gotta say, I feel special that I am still one of the, you know, one of the <laughs> folks that gets to see any. Well, game I that didn't I realize want. that, Tony. So when you get a knock at your door at ten <laughs> o'clock on Sunday. Don't be running away from that doorbell because hey, I, uh, I can't watch it. The Dolphins are on. I'm in here. Dolphins are on. <laughs> I'm coming over. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Number one. Oh, this one's just a fun one on a Friday. CBS Sports rank their top quarterbacks in the NFL right now, and here are the top five in order of their ranking. Patrick Mahomes, number one. Aaron Rodgers, number two. Russell Wilson, number three. Josh Allen, number four. And Tom Brady rounding out the top five. Chris. Do you agree with that? Um, on the surface, it sounds like a pretty good list. I think there's a lot of guys that certainly have a case to be on that list. Dak Prescott, the guy who played last night, looked like he belonged on that list. Oh, but yeah. There's only room for five. So uh, I, I guess the only complaint I might have is that Tom Brady seems a little low for being the greatest player in the history of the sport. Um, and, he, you know, I, I keep waiting for him to drop off. And uh, obviously, if you watch the game last night, he's not dropping off in any way, shape, or form. He looks just as good as he always has. Um, but, yeah, it's a pretty good list. I mean, those are five great quarterbacks. But Josh Allen wouldn't get the nod over Tom Brady yet. I think Josh Allen's getting the nod based on what they think he's going to do this year. But Josh Allen hasn't accomplished anything close to what Tom Brady's accomplished. So I I would change that ranking a little bit and uh, – you know, maybe in a few years, Josh Allen could get on the list alongside Tom Brady, but not yet. What do you think, Tony? I mean, it just depends on what this top five is. Yeah, exactly. Like, is, is this is this like the in terms of talent, all that makes a quarterback what it is? This list is probably pretty accurate. But if we're talking about winning, I mean, Tom can't be five. He's got to be <laughs> one. I mean, it's, that's just how it has to be. And then. Then there's actually an argument of who's second, third, or fourth, right? Uh, a, a probably a legit argument between Mahomes, Rodgers, and, and Wilson. 
Josh Allen's probably fifth on this list, unless you are saying, who do you want to start your franchise with out of these quarterbacks? Right, then, that's a different then maybe, list. Then that's a different list. So I, I guess, like Chris said, on, on the surface, yes, this, this makes sense. All right, that's it for the Big Five. When we get back, we're going to get you set for the game tonight between the Dodgers and the Padres. We still have some baseball left. Football is not the only thing that's on now. we still got a big old playoff race for the Padres. So we'll get uh, you set on that, and we'll make some daily gambit bets here in the 5 o'clock hour on 97.3 The Fan. Want to know what Maggie Mc... I'm Aaron Ryan, political commentator, comedy writer, and host of Crooked Media's Hysteria. And I'm co-host Alyssa Mastromonaco, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff for President Obama. Each week on Hysteria, we are joined by a team of hilariously opinionated ladies to discuss the headlines from the serious to the absurd. We cover everything from reproductive rights to rom-coms and break down the political news of the week and cultural stories that affect women's lives. New episodes of Hysteria drop every Thursday. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Most mortgage lenders charge a fee, sometimes up to a point and a half for pulling cash out of your home's equity. Those points are on your whole loan balance, not just the cash you get. For example, if your loan amount is $400,000, that's a $6,000 fee. For a limited time, owning will waive this fee so qualified borrowers can get a cash out refi with absolutely no closing costs of any kind. Besides the usual no title, escrow, appraisal, etc., no fees for a cash out on a 30-year fixed mortgage. So if you're in process somewhere and paying fees, call 8332-OWNING or go to owning.com, where our rate and APR for a no-cash-out fee 30-year fixed mortgage is 2 and 3 quarters percent. But hurry, the mortgage industry won't like this, so who knows when this special goes away. Call 8332-OWNING or go to owning.com. NMLS 2611, licensed by the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation under the California Residential Mortgage Lending Act. Subject to credit approval. Call 833-303-2160 for terms and conditions. Equal housing lender. You want to know what wagertainment is? It's the picks, the analysis, the information, mixed with the laughter and the entertainment, smart sports betting content. That'll put a smile on your face. The BetQL Network, streaming live each day and helping you bet smarter. If you're a sports fan, you know why you should listen? It's sports betting content without the BS. No hot takes, no nonsense. The BetQL Network, streaming live right now on Odyssey. Sports, bets, and entertainment.